Hey y'all, Chef Irix Guy here, and y'all asked me how do I uh, how do I set up my electric smoker start to finish. So as you can see here, I store my electric smoker outside. I've got this really nice cover. By the way, the cover, the smoker, all the accessories, you can expand this video's description and then click the links there to find where to order it online. But this is what I do, man. I've got this little magnetic piece, and that just better prevents the wind from blowing the smoker cover off. I remove the smoker cover. I put it on my wrought iron table, and I use the magnet to better prevent it from blowing away. You notice here, I, I stored the little drip pan on the top. Always store it upside down, because even though that's highly water resistant, with the right amount of rain, a little bit of water could penetrate. So you don't want water to collect in this while it's in storage. Uh, the next thing I do is, is just kind of set this to the side, and then I visually inspect to make sure there aren't snakes or spiders or lizards or raccoons in my uh, electric smoker because I don't want to grab something and get injured. So what we're going to do now and you can you can get legs and wheels for this but look there's that make sure it's there it is it's set up I get the power cord and run it off to the side then I get the the drip pan, and I put the drip pan on the back. That's that, and then I open the electric smoker. I thoroughly inspect to make sure there aren't any insects or rodents or anything that have entered, which there probably won't be, but that's the last thing you want to do in slow smoke and then make a nasty discovery when you pull your meat out. So these right here, these I've got four grates, but I'm only gonna smoke one butt today, about an 11 pound butt. So I'm gonna put these to the side because there's no reason to have them in there. That's just something else to clean up afterwards. And then I'll take my water pan out. You can put whatever you want to in your water pan. I keep it simple. I just put water and some chopped garlic in it. So I'm going to load up my water pan. I'm going to grab my wood chips and then we're going to get this sucker started here. So I'm taking this inside and then I'll, I'll be right back. We'll continue with this video. So the next thing I do before I plug anything in, I put in my water pan. Now in my water pan today, I've got chopped garlic. Now the reason I put chopped garlic in the water pan, as this water pan heats up, it uh, it releases what's referred to as aromatic. So you're getting the steam, a little bit of steam from the water to help with moisture control, but the addition of freshly chopped garlic clove adds to the aromatical properties of that steam. In other words, think of the steam and it's got like a garlic flavor and smell to it. That's continuously penetrating your, uh, your pork butt. So just a way to add additional flavor to your smoke. So I'm going to slide this in here. Very carefully, don't want to spill the water, okay. There we go, so it's in there. And you'll notice that I've chosen to put my grate directly above the water pan. Personal preference, I found that I get the best smoke, uh, well, just the best overall result just the flavor profile and the tenderness and everything now we're going to load this up this is our wood chip reloader but what I like to do for the first time instead of using the reloader I'll just pull the actual tray out so here's my wood chip tray so I'll get my wood chip this is not hot so I can sit this on it never put it on if it's hot I'm going to load this up all the way with wood chips. Now my smoke, in my opinion, my, the optimal smoking temperature is about 225 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a topic of debate, but I get the best results at 225 Fahrenheit. But when I first put my chips in, I'm going to crank the temperature of this smoker up higher than my desired smoking temp. So let's see, let's try slide our wood chip tray in here.
Okay, wood chip tray is in. I can close the door. Notice there's no window. I hate electric smokers with windows. That's why I don't have a window. And you can check out my separate video where I explain why I hate electric smokers that have a window. Subscribe and, and check out my uh, electric smoking videos. So now I've got, and this is important, outdoor use extension cord. This is a extension cord that's in great condition. It's made for outdoor use. Obviously you do not want to get this wet. Uh, something that I do is I will often elevate where this extension cord meets the built-in cord. I'll often put, like right here in my case, I've got this deck, so I'll, I'll put it up there just in the event that a little bit of moisture is introduced that since it's off the ground, hopefully it won't puddle and hopefully it won't make contact with that connection. Because electricity is deadly, dude. Electricity is deadly. So I'm gonna plug this in. Now I push the power button on the master build. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna jack it up to 250 just to get the stuff smoking, the wood chips burning. You notice I had to kind of cover, one, one, the only small gripe is that in strong sunlight, you kind of got to cup your hands to see the display. But what I did, I set it to 250 temporarily just to get the wood chip smoking. And then I set the timer, and this is very important, I set it for 24 hours. Because I'm going to smoke this for 24 hours, give or take a few hours. If you don't set it for a long duration, what could happen, say you were smoking something else for six hours, but you only set your timer for an hour at an hour it would turn off <laughs> and that would result in disappointment so for that reason by default always go with the timer the maximum time which is 24 hours or so and then you know i can adjust accordingly um, if i if i do have to go beyond 24 hours i just hit the timer again and increase it by a few more hours but uh just a word of wisdom here from chef irix guy so now all i'm doing we're gonna step away for a few minutes while this starts to uh, heat up because we're going to have our our wood chips. They can catch in this smoker around 225, but I found that if I you know, started at 250, that they'll catch a lot quicker. And then I can reduce the temp. And obviously when I open the door to load my pork butt, the temp's going to reduce. But I don't want to start smoking until I've got it down to 225 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take a few degrees temp. Okay, so I've reduced the temperature to 225 degrees Fahrenheit ambient. You can see there's smoke coming out. I've got my pork butt thoroughly rubbed and I've got the wireless probe inserted. I actually did that before I brought it out here. And like I mentioned, you can expand this video's description and then click the link there to find the smoker, the probe like I use, everything. So let's go ahead and put this in here. Look at all that hickory smoke. Now you, you could use hickory and I've linked the chips like I use. Or you could use uh, apple wood, you could use cherry, you could use oak, variety of different woods. But what I like to do, I'll put the, the butt in here. This is the white part, this is called the fat cap. It goes up, it goes up towards the sky. So we're gonna, before I put this in there, I'm gonna kind of rub this around in here to get some extra, uh, extra barbecue seasoning. That yellow that you see is yellow mustard. Subscribe, check out my video playlist for uh, electric smoker videos, and you can find step-by-step step how I rub my butt and what I rub it with. Very simple, very important step, and this yellow mustard is imperative because it acts as what's called a binder. You're not gonna taste the mustard, but it's going to stick the seasoning 
going to ensure that the seasonings remain stuck to the pork butt throughout the smoke. And when you're smoking something like this for 24 hours or so, that's what really makes it even better once you take it up. See, there's some right there. Actually, I'm going to rub the side of it too in this. A trick I use, and again, subscribe, check out my other videos within my electric smoker playlist. But I squirt yellow mustard and barbecue seasoning in my uh, in my casserole dish like I just did there. So now I've got all of that, and before I put it on, I rubbed it around and more thoroughly coated it. But to reiterate, this top part is what's called the fat cap. It's the white colored part. That needs to go up, because if it doesn't, your pork butt's not gonna be as good. The reason is, is that that fat cap while your butt smokes for 24 hours or so, however long it is, depends upon the size of your butt, uh, that will, in essence, drip down and better flavor and tenderize your meat while it slow smokes. Mm, yeah, I've got every little piece covered here. You can wear gloves if you want to, but I don't. I just like to be a boss. I'll go in and wash my hands thoroughly. Definitely wash your hands because you don't want to cross-contaminate anything. So there it is right there, and I've got my temperature probe in it. have no desire to open this until it's 201 degrees Fahrenheit, internal meat temp. Actually, I'm going to wash my hands and then come back and close that. So now I'm gonna close the latch and I've got my smartphone inside the house and I'll use it to monitor both the ambient temperature, to monitor the ambient, ambient temperature to ensure that my ambient stays around 225 degrees Fahrenheit. It's okay if it fluctuates by a few degrees, but ultimately once the internal temperature of my butt reaches 201 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, because in my opinion, that's the optimal uh, done temperature. You know, everybody has their own opinion, but I like 201 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to let this smoke probably 24 hours or so. Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And when you do, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.